Good evening. Welcome to the 2024 St. Paul String Quartet Competition Virtual Interviews. My name is Ray Shows. I'm first violin of the Artaria String Quartet and founder and administrator of America's only competitive contest exclusively for string quartets. Now, this is our 19th year of competitions, and today I have the privilege of introducing the Knox Quartet, uh, hailing from Boston, Massachusetts right now. But I want to find out for the audience where you guys really are from. I can't imagine. I certainly know uh, Ava's not from Boston, but I can't imagine that you're all three bean, uh, uh, Boston beans here. Um, could we go around the, around the room and start with, uh, um, uh, let's start with Ari. I'm randomly picking somebody on the left side of my screen here. Uh, and after he's done, let's just go around the room and let us know where what your name is, the instrument you're playing in the quartet, and where you're from. Um, okay, so my name is Ari. Um, I am the cellist of this quartet, and I'm from New York City. Hi, uh, my name is Yu Hang. I play viola in the quartet, and I'm from Albany, New York. Hello, my name is Eleanor Markey. I play violin, and I am actually from Wayland, Massachusetts, which is very close to Boston. Um, I'm Ava. I also play violin, and I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. Question number two. So how did each of you get interested and introduced to chamber music? Miss Kenny, would you lead us off? My main introduce introduction to chamber music was like during the summer. I grew up going to Suzuki Institute and like one of the years I got to be in a quartet and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. And like, I'm so grateful I've gotten to meet so many like amazing chamber musicians and friends like that I've gotten to play with like over the years ever since. Yeah. Yuang, tell us your story. Yeah, so I I formed a, a, a string quartet when I was in high school, um, when I was played in youth orchestra. Uh, it was sort of for fun, like we can get outside of um, the, the orchestra and sort of hang out and play some music. And that's how we I started playing chamber music. Our first piece was Tchaikovsky's first string quartet, which was quite difficult. And then we did it again next year. We studied Mendelssohn's second string quartet for the whole year, and that was a lot of fun. And we played a lot of gigs around the area and did a lot of performances. Um, so I, I got my initial chamber music experience there. And I think some of the most... Um, chamber music I played was during COVID when orchestra didn't happen that much. Um, I got to play Schubert Quintet with some people, some Beethoven string quartets. Um, and I actually played both of them at the same time just because of how much spare time I had. So um, I was excited to continue doing chamber music once I got to college. And I'm glad that I got the chance to be able to do it with such a high level group here. So, Eleanor, you're so far away from Boston. Where did you get your uh, chamber music bug, so to speak? Yeah, so when I was in sixth grade, I was in my first piano trio, and we stayed together for three years. Um, and we got to perform in one of the, like, final NEC prep chamber showcases in Jordan Hall. And it was really exciting. And then the summer after my first year playing with that trio, I went to Greenwood Music Camp. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in a string quartet and we played Beethoven opus 18, number four, first movement. And I'd never played a piece like I'd never played in such a high level string quartet before. And I'd never played a piece that cool before either. That I was just so excited. because I was like, we sound so good. And this is so fun. <laughs> and I was just like, really, really excited to be playing with them. And I never wanted it to end. And then after that, I continued with the piano trio and we went on from the top together. Um, um, and that was incredible. And then the following year, I actually started the Chamber Intensive Performance Seminar, the CHIPS program at NEC Prep. It was directed by Mary Peckham. And I was in it from the like the year that it like first started. And I did it every year that I could until I graduated. So the CHIPS program, like especially really got me into like super chamber music mode and so I had some great groups and we played some great pieces and it was really the chips program that like brought me from like oh this is so fun I never want it to end to like I have to do this forever <laughs> like, <that's amazing. laughs> well so my my journey with chamber music also started at Greenwood um uh I went 
for the I I went for six summers in total, um, so you know it's the kind of place where you just keep going back. Um, but you know I I went for the first time when I was like twelve or thirteen, uh, and I had a group go through the New York Youth Symphony Chamber program. Um, we were together for well I I was in a a piano quintet and then a trio and then. But then I, I settled on a string quartet and we were together for two years, the, the last two years of high school. And um, we were very ambitious and we did Coltman uh, and we um, did all these community engagement performances and uh, et cetera. And then uh, also I, at Juilliard pre-college, I was in like two other groups, you know, each, quartet that I play in is better than the last one. Like each experience I have is is more rewarding and more satisfying and I learn more. And so I just want to keep doing it. Now, what is the origin of your name? Eleanor, how did you guys come up with Knox Quartet? So the reason I came up with the name the Knox Quartet is because we found that we sound a million times better when we're rehearsing in a completely dark room. Like we would try rehearsing and it would like sound like, you know, we'd be frustrated. We'd be like, oh, nothing's working. It's not gelling. Um, but then we would try like, first I think we tried like turning the music away and then closing our eyes. Then we were like, you know, we should just turn off the lights. And one of the practice room buildings at NEC, the Jordan Hall building, a lot of the rooms don't have windows. So when you turn off the lights, it's like really dark except for the hallway. And so it was really dark. We couldn't see each other. We couldn't see the music. And we just had to rely on like listening. And we were like, oh, we sound so good when it's dark. That's so cool. And we were like, okay, we have to incorporate that into our group name. And so Nox means night in Latin. I took Latin in sixth, all, all actually all, all throughout middle and high school. So I was like, oh, Nox means night in Latin. And it's like, we practice in the night because it's dark. And so that's how we got a name. Who selected the repertoire? We started with the Haydn Opus 20 number four. Everybody liked that. We read through it once and we thought, yeah, this is, we should play this. And then Brahms was always, I think Brahms was on Ava's mind <laughs> and we all loved it. So we, we wanted to play that as well. The compulsory work. I'll, I'll go again. Um, I, 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 re I really like how, um, how well it portrays the idea that he was, uh, his wife was hospitalized and he was very scared and stuff like that. I think it's the tremolo strings and I think the salt ponticello sort of uh, texture really brings out that sort of uh, like terrifying sort of sound and like feeling in yourself. Um, and I think that, um, I think it's a great piece for people to really hear and grab onto um, because it's just so like aggressive to start that it immediately grabs your attention. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I think it's it's a great one for um, for string quartet just to start out and um, show what they what skills they have. I think it's yeah. I also think it's a really great uh, piece for our group specifically because it's so different from the Haydn and the Brahms that we're doing for the the, the other pieces that we're doing. You know the it's got this rhythmic edge that that neither the Haydn nor the Brahms really have in the same way. Um, and so there's a lot of potential there for, for contrast. I think that our group, we talk a lot about like how to bring like an emotional aspect to our playing and like what kind of, what kind of emotions we're going for, what pictures we're trying to paint, what scenes, what feelings we're trying to evoke. And like, we've talked about like, what does this section taste like? What does this section? And like, I feel like this, piece this movement is so like sensory like I listened to it for the first time and it just like immediately is like oh wow um we love doing metronome work <laughs> so we're 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 really excited to and I'm not being sarcastic like we're oh. we're super excited to to dig to sink our teeth into this piece I love the piece I think one of my favorite things when like reading about it and um listening to it is just like the way that he incorporates like his roots in jazz 
and also like with the classical like with the quartet style I think it's really cool I love like the meter changes figuring out all the rhythms will be really fun It'll... thank you for that now Ari how would you describe your gr group's rehearsal style we well we we know we know when when to to fight for our ideas and when to admit that we're that uh, maybe someone has something uh, something that that you disagree with is is worth um listening to so so one of the things that we try to do is try everything uh, if someone wants to do something we'll try it and then we'll discuss you know what did we like about that what didn't we like what are the other possibilities that that we can um, pursue something that's really important to us is making sure that everyone's voice gets heard yeah yeah i think our rehearsals are always interesting in that way um and i think one thing we always try to do is we try to um no matter what our ideas are we try to go from the score from what the music what is written there and we stem our ideas from there we try always to stay within uh within that the just from the score not from any external influences but what we see and what we think the composer wrote and i think we we try and we want to stay true to that we try everything and we try it with a thousand percent like if we don't like an idea we're not going to only give it half an effort every idea we're going to try to like fully see what the person means fully see what the idea is about and convey that so that we are giving every idea like the best possible chance it can and that way afterwards we can talk about it and say oh wait i thought that would work but maybe the other thing works better and i think while we all are stubborn i also think it's a very it's a humble like where i feel like everyone is humble and able to say like oh wait i actually like your idea better and that's something that we're able to do. Like, of course we're stubborn and we have our ideas and we want our ideas to like be the idea. But if we try, so, cause we're trying everything. If we hear someone else's idea and we say, oh wait, that actually kind of sounds better. We're able to say that and say, oh wait, yeah, you were right. Let's do that instead. And I think that's really special like the fact that everyone has something very clear and like deliberate that they want to say, but everyone is also simultaneously not so absorbed in their own ideas that they can't understand anyone else's.